Welcome to the sealed only Digimon challenge. Join me on my adventure as we battle through every enemy that comes our way. Selecting of all six colors of decks on a budget of 20 pounds per week. Can you do it? Can you be the next Digidestined Tamer? Good morning, Tamers. Thank you for joining me for episode six. So this one's gonna be a bit different. It's already massively long. I don't think you guys wanna sit through forever and a day. So what we're going to do this week is we're just going to show off the decks and the next week we'll have every single uh, deck that we currently have up until now play a match. So next week there will be four matches. So yeah, last week you got two matches. This week you've got literally an hour of deck profiles and then next week you'll have four matches. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. Hopefully you guys can actually see how we're progressing so far in the series. And uh, we'll join you when we do the openings and we'll get to the deck profiles. See you in the video. Welcome back guys to another week with me, Akita Swiftly. So, this is the last of our 1.0 packs. Don't worry guys, we'll be having our first 1.5 opening on the tilt only this week as well. But we're going to crack these open first and then we're going to drop by with a uh, 1.5 at the end of the pack openings. So, as I said, there's always a small chance that we could pull one more super rare or somehow an ultimate rare card, but... I don't think we're going to get that lucky. There's still some good rares in this set that we can do with, as it will help us out a little bit more. But just want to see what we uh, can pull. So, a Kragamon, a Goblinmon, an Impmon. We will be trying to make him purple this week and maybe black as well. Wizardmon, a Hearts Attack, a Monodromon, a Pixiemon, a Breakdromon, a Megadromon, a Wanyumon. Uh, rare War Groundmon. When Digivolving, if you have a Red Tame in play, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 3000 DP or less. That's pretty good. And it also has an inheritance effect of your turn. While well, there are five more cards in your opponent's trash, this Digimon gets 1000 DP. Ooh. Yeah, this is probably going to go into our red deck again, as we just want to have more stuff for our Galatmon to sort of work with. And the good black tie, start of your turn. If you have two memory or less, set your memory to three. Opponent's turn, all your black Digimon get 1000 DP. As I keep saying, this is a really good card to play right now because Black Locks do a lot of blocking. So the extra 1000 DP in this multiplicative, so if you have four of these in the deck, you know, there's a good chance you'll have like a defender with like maybe, for instance, we have Andromon, 11,000 DP on your opponent's turn. Nothing's really going to break for that really unless they start actually like hammering it in. But yeah, I think we're going to start looking to see if we can make Black this week and maybe Purple too. But yeah, I'm happy we're getting more Tamers for Black. Still on the hunt for the Digi Eggs for all colours though. Well, for green, purple and black. Because I don't think we have enough to have the, the full sets free for you. Oblivion Bird, Dark Tyrannomon, Monzimon, Blade of the True, Metal Tyrannomon, Filemon, Veritzamon, Nova Slash Angimon, Monomon, High Andromon. Sumon, ooh, and Mad Dog Fire. One of your opponents gets 3,000 DP for the turn, and security trigger draw one. And this card is its hands, too bad. And then the memory goes over to take out. So we have the other black baby for this set, which is uh, Kaporamon. All this Digimon has reboot, it gets 1,000 DP, which is really good with some of the stuff like. What's the machine draw one? Too sure if it does, but I do know it's a Black or Greymon that has this, so this is really good for the Black or Greymon. But sadly, we don't have access to that card just yet, and probably won't for a while. But we'll go over that probably in the future as to why I say for a while. Pokemon. Sumon. Sparrow Sword. Wergurumon. Smash Potatoes. Hagurumon. Labramon. River of Power. Birdramon. Karamon. And a Joe Kido. We have a Lyamon, a Volcanodromon, fantastic card, Nuclear Laser, an Armadillomon, a Tyrannomon, a Sessimon, a Boring Storm, a Palmon, a Kuagamon, a Biomon, sorry about that, a Gakumon, 
and a Metal Grumon Super Rare. So that's probably going to go in our purple deck. But yeah, that's our pulls for the 1.0 stuff. And that's it for now. So if you give me two or three seconds, I'll magically use my editing skills and stick us into 1.5. See you on the other side of this transition. Tamers, it's here. Episode 6 is complete. We have 1.5. Now, you're thinking he's going crazy. Now, we only need one pack from this box, but because it's the start of a brand new box, we do get two dash packs. We now get a memorial pack, as well as the two box toppers in here. So, without further ado, let's crack this bad boy open. Looky, looky, what have we got here? We have ourselves a black Garumon. So we have a black Garumon. We have a box stopper. And we have one pack. Complete our episode 6 pack opening. So, you go last. Let's crack these bad boys open. Oh no. Oh no, please. What we got, 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 we got a. Oh, a DNA Digivolution. Hearts United. Can't even see that because it's so bright in here. Oh god. If you have a Davis Matiema and a Ken Ichijoji in play, you may place one X Vmon and one Stigmon from your hand at the bottom of your deck in any order to play one Pelgemon from your hand without paying its memory cost. It's a good card. I don't know who's going to see a lot of play. I know there is like impu like Impurmon Rush decks going out currently. But I don't know if we'll be playing that deck as... Our blue deck currently consists of kind of like of de digivolving stuff as it is what it is. But there's a chance that we can see some good stuff in this set still. For our first dash pack, we are having, I believe this is a... Oh god. Brave Shield. Blow shield, there we go. Brave shield. I don't know if we're playing a brave shield at all, but what it does is main and suspend one of your Digimon until the end of your turn. That Digimon gains blocker, and then yeah, the security effect is the same. It's an okay card. I don't really see having much usage as the only blocker you really want to use in that area for red is either the lower champion blockers or the weird Ragnar Award Mon card. But we are looking for also something along the lines of a Quagamon or we're looking for a Blitz Greymon. And, oh, okay. That's, that's how you want to call that card, I suppose. There we go. We have a Blitz Greymon. Now, we don't necessarily need a Blitz Greymon. But it is a nice new card for our red deck. Or our black deck, really. So if we are looking for something, maybe we could play this in the black deck, just because we want to pump it out a bit more. Uh, our black deck is currently three cards short, so yeah, if we stick that in there, it would help towards that at the end. We do technically have this new promo too, so that's also a black card for us. As well as, what is our box toppers? It's another set of Agumon and Greymon. Woo! Yeah, baby. Fred's getting all the love today. So... You can see us playing another one of these Agamons, as a lot of the Agamons here. Your turn, while well, this Digimon has a Greymon in its name, it gains 2000 DP. And then the Greymon. So, yeah, the Greymon's kind of okay, but it only really works as its champion form, and then it kind of dies off. There are better Greymons out there. But this Agamon is really good, and it's going to be really good when we get to set 5 and we start getting the cards that let me draw out extra Agamons or extra uh, Gabamons. So, yep, yeah, love this card. Definitely going to play it again. And then for our last pack of the opening. Yep, this was better than the uh, opening of the 1.0 stuff. We have a Duramon, Meramon, Tyludamon, a Gatamon, a Garudamon, a Howling Crusher, a Seedramon, a Birdramon. We have to start fighting. Good, good. Yeah. Quite a good card. This is getting used in Ultra V Mondex. Especially with the new 
deck itself that's coming out in September for us, I think. So do keep a hold of these if you do pull a few. Edgemont, I like the card. I think it's going to work really well in yellow, but I think the, the other colours don't have this, the effect, whereas yellow can obviously put it on the security stack and play it that way. But I like the idea of this card. Jokido, fantastic black card. And a Mayo Miotismon. I think we may now have enough cards to play the black and the purple deck, so we'll see what we can do. Join us for the deck builders. So, the red deck profile. End of an era, just beat ourselves through 1.0, and this is what we're currently looking at right now. Now, the last two editions of this deck, before we really start into the uh, 1.5 series, is we've moved one Beermon, added the other promo Agamon into this, so now we have two of the promo Agamons. They are fantastic. If we somehow get more of these in box four or so forth or whatever they're going to do for those ones, I'm not going to say no. We've also removed a Grudemon from our ultimate line, as it's not really doing much in all fairness. We're going to play ourselves a second Volcanodromon. This is where we are now. We have the original four Agumons from the decks. We have two Dracomons left. We have one Vanilla Beamon, I believe. No, oh, sorry, this is the, uh, when you get blocked, you get the 2000 DP. It's okay, in all fairness, it's going to be on your turn either way, so an Agamon probably would be better. Gilmon, the actual vanilla Beamon, and then the two promo Agamons. For our options, we have just the four guy Forces for now. In all fairness, there's probably nothing really better than this for the red deck for at least a while, until we do get Delete All, which is just the overall great card for every deck. We have four... Tamers, probably too many, but that's what we have so far. We have the Sora card, which is the uh, when your turn, you have a red Digimon player, can spend the Tamer, has an extra 2000 DP. And that saved me in a few games. We hit the stack a bit early. The the good tie, which is the if you don't have free memory, set your memory to free. If you have anything more than free, don't worry about it. And then all your Digimon with four more Digivolutions can have a Secure Attack plus one, which benefits the Megas over here. And then you have the two basic tides, which is all of your Digimon on your turn gain an extra 1,000 DP. That's obviously multiplicative, so for every one you have, you gain an extra 1,000 DP. Then we have our champions. So we have uh, one Groudmon. We have four Cordromons for our blockers. I don't receive any more blockers for a while for red. We have one of the promo Greymons. I'm probably going to look to get rid of this as soon as we get something better. But it's here for now, just because it's a bit of a chunky boy. We have two... Dark Tranamons, just because they're super cheap to evolve and they have a really good DP. We have to strike in early. We've got three of the theme deck Grey Monster, which is a security checker, which I think is really good. I think three is probably the good number for these. But then we have the three Grey Mons that give you the extra DP inherited, which is the 2000s. So if you're holding this and then you're also holding the uh, Agumon into, say, a uh, War Greymon, you do receive 4000 additional DP. So. It's, uh, it's quite good. Then for our ultimates, we have two Karudas. We have one Growl. We have one Mega. Essentially, it's just a beat stick early game. Sadly, there's no school Greymon or Metal Greymon that has like 10,000 DP yet. If there ever is one, we'll probably get rid of this at, in that. So yeah, benefits more out of uh, Greymon, Agumon stuff. We have one school Greymon. This comes up more often in Nut than you think. It's a... Blocker Destroyer on play. 7 cost is quite high, but it's one cheaper than Guy Force. And if you're playing against the black version of, say, uh, Red Lord Mon, and I think this can get rid of Cranny Mon too. It can make your day a little bit easier. It's not as terrible as people think it is. And I'm playing three of the Metal Grey Mons, which is the when Digimon is blocked, you gain free memory. That in itself is pretty good when you're thinking that you won't be playing with the War Greymon, or you might be playing with a Omnimon. And then, for our last section here, the, the Megas, we have two of the Volcanodromon. This is essentially just to come back Rookie Rush. Yes, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg just to play it on the field. But you do gain Security Attack plus one for the next turn, and you do destroy whatever monsters on the field that are there with the uh, 4,000 or less DP. We have one. Galatmon. This is essentially just for a late game play. When you digivolve up into this, you know, and you go to attack, you destroy security based on their uh, their trash bin. Late game, this can basically put you into a position where you can just strike in and win. Then we have four of the deck 
more grey mons. We didn't pull any of the war grey mons during the actual 1.5 op uh, 1 opening. And this is just for every two devolutions you have underneath it, you gain an extra security attack. So it's very easy for you to actually strike in early game and possibly hit all five of your opponent's security in one strike. And then we got very lucky. We pulled one Omnimon out of the box as well as one Omnimon out of our uh, deck openings. And this is what we have so far. These are essentially just, again, more ways to win. We haven't really got a chance to play Omnimon. I know Mrs. Swiftly got to play Omnimon in one of the games. But we ourselves have not had the chance to uh, strike down with the power of the uh, almighty vaccine sort of doom. But that's the profile for the red so far. Let's have a look at the blues. Right then, guys. This is the massively underwhelmingly blue deck. No, it's, it's been doing pretty well. I'm quite happy where we are for the blue deck. The only thing you may notice is that our Megas are kind of a bit lacking by two, but we do have a hell of a lot of uh, option cards. I do think that we probably will have to remove some of these option cards and do put extra Megas in when we get down the road, when we do get extra Megas. The issue is, I think there's only like one blue Mega that comes out in this set, which is Pildramon. So we won't really be playing it in Pildramon. There are some uh, V-Mon cards that I do like we may be putting here if we do pull them. But for now, we have the two Upamons. I would have probably liked more Upamons, but I'll take it as it is. We've got the uh, three Sunamons. We have the wonderful Jokido over here. Uh, when your opponent digivolves a card is trashed, you may suspend the time to gain more memory. Memory is always great. And then, on your turn, if you put as Digimon, no Digimon cards gain more memory. So there's a good chance that once per turn, you can basically gain free memory for the fun of it. We didn't pull the good blue card, which I think is the other map in this set, which would have been the gain free memory at the beginning of the turn. But, for our rookies, we have the promo Gabmon. We got very lucky that we pulled the promo from the uh, dash pack. Now, this is just an on-play effect that you do draw one extra card. I think free cost just to draw an extra card isn't too bad. I think we do run some of those in here still. Or that we may have done, I think we may have taken them out just to play the promo version because it's pretty. You know how I feel about that. Got a basic Gomon. This will probably go eventually in the future. It probably will be replaced by a Vmon if we do pull a Vmon. So we've got the Armadillo Mon. 4,000 DP isn't too bad for a rookie. We have a Mon Mon, which is a level 1, well, a rookie blocker. It's not very good in terms of DP, but the fact that it's a blocker is still pretty good. We have three of the Gabmons with the inherited effect of Trash the Opponent's Digimon card at the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon. With a level seven, uh, level five or less when attacking, which I think is still a pretty good effect, especially later game. We've got three bearmons. I like bearmon. No, sorry, we've got four bearmons. I do like bearmon. He's a vanilla though, so there's a good chance that he might also be replaced by vmons in the future. And then we have the inset gomon, which is the on deletion game on memory. It's more of a blue for blue sort of matchup. But that's not so bad. We did remove one of the. Plain vanilla Gomons to add an extra Monmon in. So we are running the two Monmons. So we are technically running six blockers in this deck. Then, when it comes to our champions, we are running a single Gulamon. You will see what's over here in a second. We're running a single Gulamon just because it's a, a big boy. It's a good old high DP. We've got two of the Groomons with the Heritage Effect Trusty Distribution Cut at the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon. With the Gurumon, sorry, with the Gabmon into the Gurumon, that is thrashing two. We have four of our Grizzlymons, just because we have we don't want blockers, blockers are always good. And then we have two Ikakumons, and this is the, the Digimon can't be blocked by an opponent's Digimon with no Devolution cards. So that's basically saying, hey look, you might have a big black blocker there, but it's got no Devolution cards, it can't stop me, I'm going to still attack your security. And we've removed the Dolphinmon to add the other Ikakumon. So we do play three of these bad boys now. Sorry for the focusing in and out. I am trying to auto-focus this because I just can't get a good focus on it manually. And we're playing eight ultimates. The weird number for ultimates is somewhere between eight and twelve. So I think eight might be a bit on the low side, but we've never really seen any inconsistencies in our games. You do normally see us get at least the ultimate levels in our games. And that is we're playing... Four of these were Groomons, which is the, uh, while your opponent has a Digimon with no Devolution cards, this Digimon gets an extra security attack, a heritage effect for your Megas over there. And they're just playing three Zudamons, which is on Digivolution, trash two Digivolution cards at the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon, which is pretty good. Say so you're going against a Mega, and you may, may want to suicide, so you attack in, 
get the inherited effects from your megas uh, from your champions and your rookie that did make remove two more dissolution sources and that stops them from really possibly playing their uh the game just as much then we have the other promo metal seizure one which is on play return to two of your opponents level four or lower digimon to your hand and then your turns digimon can't be blocked by your opponent's digimon with no dissolution cards fantastic card and then when digivolving trash four dissolution cards from under one of your opponent's digimon this is essentially just a bigger version of the zudamon so yeah you might want to digivolve into zudamon and then digivolve again into the sable Leomon, and that way you're just trashing as much as you can then we're just playing four of the deck metal Grumons, which is the once per turn you may unsuspend this digimon so you get to attack twice per turn and then we have our option cards to go down which wouldn't focus so little we have two good blessed uh, two kot breaths which is return one of your opponent's digimon to the owner's hand trash all the digimon uh, digivolution sources underneath of it it's cost seven it's not quite a gaia force but it's still a very good card no brainer hammer spark times four now i thought originally hammer spark was a two off in the blue decks which if you may have seen the episode you may have heard me say that so yeah we have uh, we technically have a spare set of hammer sparks to go in case we ever do want to make a different deck for blue and just try maybe run it on the side maybe we do want to do as a a joker a theme we actually might do the v mon imperial Drummond deck see if we can do that as a not a sealed only thing but maybe as a boss run if we have enough cards for it and then the uh Cost nails, choose one of your digivolutions and place it under one of your Digimon and play it. There was the other Digimon without paying its memory cost, which is quite good late game, especially if you're saying you're playing a Omnimon Blue, and then you can maybe remove your Metal Groomon, put that out, so then you still have two very offensive attackers on that side. And then the last two cards of this deck are the Sorrow Blues, which are choose one of your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards. That Digimon can't attack or block until the end of your opponent's next turn. And then security, choose one of your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards. That Digimon can't attack or block until the end of the next turn. So yeah, it's essentially just the same thing, but on the security effect. Only cost two, it's a pretty good card. It has been used against me a few times for uh, Blue 2, just beat me up. But that's the deck profile for Blue. Let's have a look at Yellow. Right, Yellow time. No, 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 no. Okay, no more of that going up a raid. So, we've taken out a... Biomon, it's pretty good, but I don't think it would really do much because obviously Yellow's not particularly strong. And we've taken out a Gatamon. Just when it is a decently strong DP wise in Yellow, in all fairness, but it's a vanilla. And what we've done is we've put in another Sasarimon. It has jamming, to be honest. We need all the help we can get when it comes to just punching over things in Yellow. And then we put the Gatamon from 1.5 in, which is the one of your opponent's Digimon gains, sorry, it gets 1000 less DP for the turn. When attacking, pretty good. As, as I've already said, yellow has a problem with attacking because they're quite puny. Just because they, they obviously benefit from other things. But I do like this. And I do think it's going to be quite good. So, if we go over the lovely deck profile for yellow. As you can see, it's all played out a bit differently compared to the last two. So, we have our babies over here. We're still playing with the four uh, tokemons. We didn't get anything else other than this one baby from the whole box. Yes, that's right. We got one yellow baby from the whole box of 1.0. So... Uh, Keromon, uh, your turn while well, you have six or more security cards system gets for 2000 plus DP. That will probably never happen for us, but the fact that we have a baby is obviously just nice to get the extra levels out. And also makes it cheaper for us to play our rookies. Then we have our lovely rookies. So we have ourselves the on play Patamon, which is okay. So on play, reveal one, sorry. On play, reveal four cards from the top of your deck, add all yellow tamers amongst them to your hand. Place remaining cards at the bottom of your deck in any order. Pretty good, especially if we were to pull some of the Shine Grey ones later in the, uh, the series. Anything to get these out? Yes, we only have three out currently, but we can obviously put the four of the other TKs in here to make seven. And if we can get one more Tamer from any of the openings that we do in the near future, that way we'd have a perfect Shine Grey Mon um, Tamer section. We play three, so we're playing four of the regular. Patamons, which is the your turn once per turn when an opponent's Digimon del is deleted by dropping its DP to zero, gain one memory. Now, I do believe that is also multiplicative, so if you somehow had four of these on the field and they and you had a that it does work, I believe the only once per turn is just per Digimon, but I could be wrong. We have three Tepimon just because they're cheap and okay ish in strength, but they are just vanillas. So we would look at getting rid of maybe in the future. 
Um, I think the yellow Agamon's pretty good, so that's probably something we'd look at changing out. We have the Kudamon, and this is essentially just a when attacking if you have three or less cards in your hand, draw one card. There will be times where we possibly will only have like two or three cards in our hand, and you don't mind smashing this into something just to draw another card. We have two of those. I'm not saying they're perfect or great, but they are something that we're going to look at using just as a draw increaser. And then we have three of the Tinkermons. I would have liked four of these if possible, but we only pulled the three. And the reason we're including these in the deck is they are a cheap cost. They are only 3,000 and they are technically vanilla, but that's because they benefit from one of our champions. So for our champions, we've already seen that we're using the uh, the good Getamon. We've got two of the uh, gemming Cesarimons, just because, again, Yellow Canoes will help you can when it smashes into things. We have two Petermons. So this actually focuses for you. So when you play this from your hand, you can then also summon a Tinkermon from your hand or from the trash. Now this is literally the only reason I'm using Tinkermon in this deck and Petermons is because for a five cost, you can get two bodies on the field. I think that's a pretty good cost of worth. And then obviously this is also a rookie, so you then can start evolving that up higher with this. So I think it's pretty good. We're playing four of the Angemons from the decks. And this, uh, if you have four more security cards, you can gain one memory when attacking from a ultimate or higher. If you can get early, if you get lucky, you can get to think of something off early. This is pretty good. We don't really have much manipulation of the security just yet, but there's stuff coming out in 1.5 that could actually help us. Then we just have the vanilla uh, Gatamon still. I might change this to another Gatamon with the effect if we do pull another one, but for now, this is our uh, champion lineup. Now, our. Uh, Ultimates are a bit slim. We only have uh, six of these so far. This is where we do struggle currently in yellow. And that's where we have the three Angie Women's from the structure deck, which is the when did you evolving if you have free security or less trigger recover deck plus one. Which is obviously take a card from your deck and put it on top of your security. And then we have three of the Angie Mon, uh, Mega Magna Angie Mons, which is when attacking one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 1000 DP for the turn. I do like this. This would pair quite well with the Gatamon. Just trying to reduce as much DP as possible. So that's that. So the trainer cards we have here are good old. Curry, start of your turn. If you have three or, f three or fewer security, you gain a memory. TK, if you have two or less memory at the start of your turn, make sure you have three. And then on play, look at the stack, uh, revealing one card and in it, and it's your hand. And if you do trigger, recovery deck plus one. So basically, draw from your security stack, then replace it with a card from your deck. Now, I don't know if there's anything currently, but in the future there might be something where you can take a card from your hand and put it on top of the deck for yellow, and that way play a TK afterwards, put that over there, maybe gives you an easier time. Something like the Akilamon with the security, if it takes off the security you can then play it at the end of the battle phase in onto the field for free. And then we just have ourselves a second Kari, so these are multiplicative, so they do give you more memory if you are in that state of play. And then finally, I don't even know if the options yet, so not finally, my bad. So the Megas, we have one slash Angemon, when did you evolving? One of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 8,000 DP for the turn. So you evolve into this, you attack, you've got these here as well. There's a good chance that, you know, maybe if it's 10,000 DP, you take it to zero. And, you know, you gain extra effects just because of that. It's pretty good, I do like it. The Kentaurus Mon are just here for now, just to fill in a hole, in all fairness. They're, they're okay DP wise. And they're a bit annoying. When did you evolving? Up to five of your opponents, Digimon gain security attack minus two. So unless you're running a very hard War Greymon deck or Dragon Lord deck, you generally aren't going to be doing anything for that turn. And on deletion, one of your opponents, Digimon gets eleven thousand minus eleven thousand for the turn. So yeah, if someone guy forces you. Oh well, I guess I'm going to take something with me. We got two of those. We got very lucky. We pulled the alternate art and we pulled the regular art. But I do think those are going to get removed as soon as we get something better. Like I said, if we do get a Shine Greymon. I don't think there's anything currently better than that. If we do get the yellow wall grammars, I definitely will be taking these out and putting those in. And then we have four of these structure deck tariff mons, which is when you're attacking one of your opponents gets minus 4,000 DP for the turn. That's great because this doesn't have to be the uh, Digimon that you get blocked by, for instance. It could be a secondary one. Say your opponent has just a rookie on the field or a, a low DP champion. You go to strike, they go, okay, I'm going to block you with this card. That's perfectly fine, but I'm going to take 4,000 on this card. This card now gets deleted. Which, if you have like the TK, or oh, I have the TK, sorry. If you have one of the rookies that has like on deletion game memory, or one of the 
possible. I think it's one of the babies in the future has if you delete something you get you can draw one. It's pretty good. And then we have our option cards, which we have Heaven's Gate, one of your Digimon gets three thousand for the turn, and then on security, all of the Digimon and security Digimon get five thousand DP for the turn, and this card is added to my hand afterwards. It's okay, I think it's pretty good. Blade of the True, trigger draw one for every two security cards you have available. So if I have four, I can draw two. If I have two, I can draw one. If I have six, I can draw three. We do have more of this. Well, I think we pull three of these. So if we are in a situation where yellow is looking like it's a stacking the security side of things, it might be worth maybe putting an extra one of these in. And then we have four of the he seven heavens, which is one of your opponents gets minus 10,000 DP for the turn. Essentially, this is a Gaia Force for yellow, as at most Digimon early enough game, anything ultimate and below generally have 10,000 or less DP. There are some Megas out there that do have less. For instance, Slash Engine has like 8,000. So you can kind of destroy a few things easily that way. Well, that's our yellow deck now. Let's go on to our big, mean, green machine. Time for the mean, green machine. So, nothing's really changed with this deck. We have taken two cards out, though, and that is going to be... We've removed Vegemon and put in a other Ogamon. So that's now two Ogamons for our deck. We have double jamming, so that's a little bit helpful. And we took out the poor Tenemon here, and we replaced it with Palmon. Now, the reason why is I don't really see Tenemon getting much use in the future. We've got, we got at least two of these now, so we can always replace things when we need to. But if we do get a bit of a bricky hand or there's a turn where we get the extra memory and something for us to do, we can always look at doing Palmon, putting that down and get a chance of adding an extra level 4 Digimon to our hand or at least thinning the top layer of our deck a bit more to make it easier for us to get to those cards. So, oh, before we do forget that as well, we have the uh, free free mons still. There's, you can't really see that there, but we have free free mons. We are trying our best to get anything else. There are some good rookie, uh, so there are some good Digitama in set 1.5 as it's very much more oriented around green with that being said we do have two palmas now so the whole on play effect basically try and get yourself a token one we have four kuwagamons which is the if this is level six or higher digimon it gains an extra security attack as uh, you've already, already seen our deck what it looks to do we have four agamons which is on your turn gain an extra thousand dp and then we also have one Tenemon still, so if you attack and there's the Digimon there with 3,000 DP or less, you can suspend it. I don't dislike the effect, I think it's really good. I just don't see it getting used too often, as not many people have 3,000 or less DP characters off out of the breeding area. Which I think is going to make it kind of awkward to play. Until people get either a bit more confident in their low DP decks because they do other things. Or, but We'll see. But for now, that's where we're going to be. We've got three option cards. We do have the very fancy box topper Izzy and the regular art Izzy, which is the if you have a level 5 or higher green Digimon in play, you may suspend this Digimon for the top card of your deck. If it is a card that is a Digimon card, add that card, otherwise place it at the bottom of your deck. We do play quite a few option cards in all fairness, and we do play obviously a few tamers, but I want to say at least 8% of our deck is Digimon. And then the lovely Tiger. Which does benefit this deck, quite, this deck quite a lot. Your turn. All of your Digimon with Tyranimon in their name gain PSE. So we have one Tyranimon in the deck. We have a couple of the Metals. We have two Rust Tyranimons in our deck. They, they're pretty good. Your turn. When Digivolving one of your Digimon into a Digimon card with the name Tyranimon in your hand, you may suspend this Tamer to reduce the memory cost by one. That's pretty good. No, you can... Digivolve this up for one. I think you can digivolve this up for three instead. You can also just play one of our action cards here that we've let you play for free. But I do like Tiger. I do wish we'd have pulled a couple more, especially because of how our deck is shaped up to be kind of more oriented around a Rush Trinamon doing things. And then for our champions, as I've already said, we've got two Ogamons. This is just for swinging into security and not having to worry about being uh, smashed on the way out. We have one Kuwagamon. Now, in all fairness, I should have possibly taken that out and said the Vegemon. Vegemon's got high DP. But the on-play effect is pretty good, especially when you have a lot of cards that like to interact with the whole suspending of Digimon. We have one Tyranimon, which is when Digivolve reveal three cards on top of your deck, add one level five card and one green Tamer card from them, and place the remaining cards on the bottom of your deck. Play two Togemons. 
Reveal three cards from the top of your deck, add one level five or higher card amongst them to your hand. Place any cards at the bottom of your deck. This card's going to be very relevant for a very long time. Basically speaking, this will find our uh, Megas, this will find its next stage of evolution, and this will find, if we ever get to that point, a Chaos Mob. We have two Woodmonts, which is our blockers currently. We don't receive the structure decks for green until the end of May, which is the same time as we get uh, Great Legends. Now, I do wish they had released the decks when they released the premium packs, just because it would have been given us something else to open between then and Great Legends, as well as it being the fact that I'm pretty sure purple, black and green decks came out around set 3 for Japan and obviously our set 3 came out as at 1.5 we also have 4 the Capitamons when uh, this Digimon gains 1000 DB for every suspended Digimon your opponent has now if you got lucky and you had a security, uh, sorry you got hit on the security and a flower cam came out and your opponent has got 3 or 4 monsters you've just gained 4000 DP as I do think Capitamon is very good for the attacking variant of our deck now, the ultimates here, we have, I think we have, we do, we have three metal Tremons, so we're going to put them back there. So we have two Lilymons, when attacking, suspend one of your opponent's Digimon with our blocker. The only deck you're probably going to have a lot of trouble with this is either a Ragnarodmon deck or the black blocking deck. Otherwise, I do feel like she's going to get have quite a good time against pretty much any other deck. We have three metal Tremons. When you're on your turn, when this Digimon deletes one of your opponent's Digimon level 6 or higher, Digimon battle, unspend this Digimon. So essentially, Rush Tremon comes in, slaps you around, and then gets to slap you around again for fun. We have one Cherrymon, is a blocker. Blocking's not terrible in the game, we, we do need more blockers. As I said, we don't get the rest of our blockers until the next set. Now, we do get like a weird Cap of Terramon that can block which one of those, if you attack, you cost you two memory. It might be a case of that we just basically play two of those and we have two of the Woodmons. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. We've got an Ukawagamon, which is a inherited effect of when this Digimon deletes an opponent's Digimon in battle and survives, it gains a memory. That's not terrible, we do like that here. We have the when digivolving rule, the top three cards of your deck. Uh, you can digivolve this card into one of those level six green Digimon, amongst them without paying its memory cost. Place your remaining cards at the bottom of your deck. It's pretty good if you just want to get high really quickly. Now, as I've said before, you know how I love Banjo Stingmon. If we do pull some of those in the future, I will definitely be looking at this maybe to cheat it out to get Banjo Stingmon to start slapping away as quick as he can. We've got two Mega Cover Terramons. When your opponent has two or more suspended Digimon, gain one memory. Now, that's multiplicative of in if you have two of these on the field and you go to attack with two different Digimon, you do gain two memory. And then we have a Digitalmon. This is essentially just a, a, a stocking filler for everything else. It's not a great card. I do know it is the evolved form of... Um, Ogamon, which one of those you gain free memory when you attack, but then when you go over to your opponent's turn, they then get an additional free memory. It's pretty good. Like sometimes you just want to do something so you can either finish the game, maybe, or just put yourself in a bit more of an advantageous position, even if you are going to give your opponent like possibly six memory in the next turn, depending on what their uh, their field is. Green does have that cool Terrymon though in the future, where if you, if you put it on play, your opponent can't gain memory as of a Tamer effect. So it's pretty good. Our option cards before we get to our Megas. We have two flower cannons. We got very lucky to pull two flower cannons from our decks and our boxes. Which is just suspend, but if you do hit it on the stack, then it suspends everything that isn't a blocker. Go up a Giga Blaster, suspend one of your opponent's Digimon, or two that have 4,000 DP or less. And again, this is activated on security. We have two smashed potatoes, which essentially you pay two and you can digivolve a Digimon into something for four cost or less. For a, a free cost in all fairness. Um, Terra Clusters, return one of your opponent's suspended Digimon to the bottom of their deck. Trash all the Digivolutions cards. Now we've used this in the past, it's pretty good. You do get it and you do get the same effect in the security stack. I'm personally quite a fan of Terra Clusters. It's not the same as a Gaia Force, but it's very similar to I want to say Coty Breath in, in blue. And then Hornbuster just gives an extra 3000 DP, but if you hit on security, you can suspend an opponent's Digimon and then give the card to your hand. As you can see, Green Locks to suspend a lot. Just because a lot of their bigger monsters have an effect for that, or obviously the inherited effects that affect that. So we have one Rosemon. That's the opponent's turn. When an opponent's Digimon attacks a player, 
If this teacher was suspended, you suspend one of your opponents. Did you want instead? So yeah, you can suspend for suspending, so it's pretty good. Hopefully this character has piercing, so when he attacks, if he cuts through something he, and he survives, he will then continue on to do security. At the end of attack, twice per turn, you can suspend, you can unsuspend the Digimon by decreasing your memory by three. Yeah, so if you got lucky, you started your turn off with three memory, you can attack again. If you got even luckier, and you got, let's say, six memory, you can then attack three times with this one Digimon per turn. But also at the same time, you can then unsuspend it to give your opponent free memory, but then you'd have to worry about being attacked because you're suspended. We have two Rush Tournaments. This turn, if you have a Green Tamer in play, this Digimon can attack your opponent's unsuspended Digimon. Fantastic. Just walk in there and start slapping people around. And then your turn, when this Digimon deletes one of your opponent's Digimon, in battle and survives, suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. Again, as I've already said, Green likes to suspend things. And then we just have two Titamons. This is currently our uh, strongest DP of the deck. I've, I've already said before, if we do pull a bunch of Stingmons, or we do pull uh, Mega Garamons, or we do pull anything good in green from 1.5 we'll be probably re removing these and putting those instead as they are much better cards but that's the green deck guys hope you've enjoyed this and we're going to go look at now at the black deck alrighty then so this is our first incantation of what is the black deck so we have three of the Kaporimon which is the if you have a Digimon with reboot it gains 1000 DP now I don't think we have reboot in this deck sadly as we didn't get a hold of any of the reboot cards from 1.0. But there might be some more stuff. Rebooty from 1.5 that we can see in the future. We also pulled one Sumon. So if we do ever get lucky, do get to pull some of the the Diaboramons from set 5. We do get the cool baby from there. Your turn. We have another Digimon in play with the same name as Digimon. Gain 2000 DP. For our rookies, we have a... Good summon, which is just a blocker. We have a Caramon. Your turn when you're playing over uh, Digimon with the same name as this Digimon, draw one card. Tokens do count. Uh, Hagurimon. Playing three Hagurimons. Playing two Toy Agamons, which does have reboot when you give it to a high up Digimon. So that does work with our Kaporimon. All turns your opponent can't get married except with Tatum effects, which is why two one's actually kind of good. And that's just our rookies for now. Again, this is essentially a deck that we've had to throw together. Kind of similar to how our green deck was in episode 4. But I do think our green deck was pretty good. So, our champions are... Kurisarimon, which is uh, when you play another Digimon with the same name, gain one memory. Again, this is all just to facilitate Double Ormon or Double Ormon decks. We have... Two of the Greymons, which is your turn. All well, this Digimon has a reboot. It gains jamming. Well, you play Toy Agamon into this. It's uh, smashing things for fun of it. We have two Gargamons, which is just a blocker for us. A very high DP blocker, might I add. Have the security Grumon. Obviously, if you can, you want to see him on the security. He gets knocked out. You go, okay, I'll just hold this. And then at the end of the battle phase, you go, there you go. I get myself a free body on the field. We did pull a tight Ludemont. Yep, these are some of our uh, 1.5 cards now. Which is, uh, when attacking, if the Digimon is level 7, trigger Digivolve. Uh, one, obviously, we don't have any level 7s for black yet. We didn't pull the anything from this um, this opening. Obviously, we only have the one pack. But you never know. We might get the Alter S, or we might get the Reckon Lord more further down the line, and we could possibly play um, more variants of this if we do pull more cards for that deck style. We have four of the Numen ones. It's a one cost, not great card, but at the same time, sometimes you just need to have the gap filled between Rookie and Ultimates. Now our Ultimates are two Infirm ones. So you'll turn one of these Digimon Digivolves into a Dare from a hand, reduce the memory cost of the Digivolution by one. Again, we didn't pull anything from our 1.0 stuff. We, we will still get more 1.0 stuff when we pick up the premium packs down the line. For now, this is more of a something we can hold on to until we get towards set, point, uh, set 5, when Double Ormon should be a more common card. I think it's a rare in that set, so it should be more available to us. We have a reboot here, and then while this has a reboot, it gains Security Stat plus 1 for the next stage. Again, if you have Toy Agamon, you get all these effects. It's pretty good. We have three of these. Then we have four 
Andromons, which is just a bigger block, a very similar to Cherrymon, but you can also attack with this. And then we just have two Mega Drummons. Again, this is going to be very weird, like ratios of cards right now. We are just trying to make a black deck. And then for our Megas, we have three Meta Etamons. Your turn, this Digimon can't be blocked by your opponent's Digimon. And then opponent's turn, this Digimon gains 2000 DP. This could also have Reboot on it. This can also gain additional um, DP coverage. So, Metal Atom on your opponent's turn could be pretty, pretty strong. Then we just have two High Andromons. That's the Digimon portion of this deck. It does seem very hit and miss in terms of what we can play. We we're going to try and get a good game of this later on today. But for now, that is where we stand with our Digimon. Now, we have a lot of option cards because we did seem to pull a lot of option cards. So we have one Spotter Shooter, which is Trigger, Digivolve, D Digivolve 1, one of your opponent's Digimon. Trash one of the cards from the top of your opponent's Digimon. If it has no Digivolve cards, it becomes level 3, can't trash anymore. Spotter Shooter, fantastic card. A lot of people do like this in black. Now we did pull three of the looking back at good times, which is again trigger Digivolution. Uh, if the Digimon play cost is four or less, delete it. So that's pretty good. I don't think you're going to see much play of it once we can actually get more stuff into the deck. One of your Digimon gains 3,000 DP of the turn, very similar to Hornbuster. And then security is unsuspended off your Digimon with Blocker, which would be probably better than the actual DP. Atomic Ray, unsuspended off your Digimon with Blocker, and then unsuspended all of your Digimon with Blocker, and they get 5,000 DP for the turn. So yeah, got four of those. That's pretty good. I do like that. Obviously, the big black blocking deck could be a thing, but not today. And so we have we have an extra spiral sword. Is it two? So we have two spiral swords, I think. No, three spiral swords. So yeah, three spiral swords and four atomic rays. I do quite like this, but we don't really get to use it effectively. It's pretty good if we do get a Ragnarod mod and we get the chain of events that we can get with that. But for now, we do not. Oh, and then the last two cards for this deck is... Jokido, which is if you have a Digimon with Blocker, gain one memory. I do think this is multiplicative if you have more Joes, but not multiplicative if you have more Blockers. And then we have the good TK, which is if you have two or less memory, state to three, and then all of your turns, or your opponent's turn, sorry, all of your Black Digimon get 1000 DP. So, again, very good base card with a very good effect, which is obviously the more you have, the better it is for your uh, Digimon for blocking. But that's the date profile for black as of now. Hopefully in the future we will get more black cards that we can shape around and see what we can do. Now unfortunately there's no purple deck profile this week still. So we are having to wait another week hopefully to pull some more purple cards. But until then guys, let's jump into some battles and we can see how we do. And then let's get our thoughts for the episode. So my thoughts on the video today have been... Well, it was long. Purple hopefully should be a real deck soon, hopefully, as it's been six episodes already and we don't have enough cards for purple at all. And then we have black, which is just an amalgamation of things I put together. We don't have a dab on yet, and we don't have anything really to make the deck kind of win a game. Although we didn't get to test them out this week, next week, as I said, we'll have a game where every single colleague gets to play a match. Or do a winner stays on kind of thing. But that's it for today, guys. It, it was very long. I hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. I hope it's not too uh, distressing for anyone to, to sit through this and uh, pull their hair out. And uh, yeah, so next week we should be playing four matches. Hope, fingers crossed, nothing happens. And we will see you there. So thanks for being here. Have a good week. Peace out. Goodbye. Thanks again. <laughs>